Hi guys, Rob Dunn again from the Spiceworks community here. We're doing a uh, another video for one of my plugins. Basically what I'm trying to do is just uh, record some tutorial videos for the plugins that I've been putting out just to kind of help people along with their configuration and their setup. Um, just to kind of help uh, forego any complications or questions that may arise in the forums due to just you know some misconfiguration or misunderstanding because I wasn't uh, on top of things with my documentation. So hopefully these videos will help out a little bit. Um, this is the third video I've done. The other two were for um, the uh, subcategories XML and the attachment inline viewer um, plug-in respectively. So this one, uh, today's topic is uh, we're going to go over the admin broadcast um, plug-in and essentially it's it, what it is is a widget that goes on your dashboard here um, and then it allows you to uh, create a message that is available for all of your help desk techs as well as portal users if you so desire. Um, there was in the past, there was a plugin with the prior versions of the help desk which would update this little area here uh, with a status message of your choosing. The problem with this is that this particular area is controlled by, um, by an API or library that is not available or accessible to kind of like the common user. So basically if you're a Spiceworks application administrator, you can read the messages that are here. If you're a help desk tech, this does not show up, and likewise, of course, for the portal users. So, the idea behind this was, you know, if there's a, a, a system-wide outage, like email is down, or the Citrix server is down, if there's phone issues, or a T1 is having problems, that kind of thing that affects a lot of people, we can create a message, and it will put the pane right here above the uh, the main. Uh, application data and, and also in your help desk view and everywhere else. So, um, and the nice thing of course with this was that I wanted to also create that capability for the portal so that when the user logs into their portal, they will be able to uh, see the system message. So if they're going to log a ticket about email being down, well, they'll see a message showing up at the top of the screen saying, oh, well, here's the problem, so I don't need to log a ticket. So that's the idea. Um, so the application version that I'm working with today is uh, we're at 7.4.00059. Um, the admin broadcast plugin will work with versions of 7.3. I can't remember the subversion um, or the point release. I'm sorry, the, the minor point release that it will work with, but uh, it'll tell us shortly when we get into the plugin um, download page. So the way I like to break these videos up is uh, the first section we discuss. You know, the problem. What we're what what problem are we trying to solve with this plugin? Uh, the reason why I put it together. The second part of the video I go over installing and the third part of the video we just kind of show it in action. So with all that said, um, let's go and install it. So right now I'm here at the dashboard view as you can see by this underline here with the dashboard menu selection and I want to get into my settings so I can apply uh, a new application or plugin and I'm going to say here, uh, well, you click on settings and you click on all to get to the main configuration. And we're going to scroll down. We're going to go down to manage apps. Now, I'm going to use the term plugins and applications. When I say plugins, typically what I mean is that the code is pretty much running within Spiceworks itself. And it's possible that you might run some external JavaScript, which is the case with admin broadcast, by the way. Um, but all the data is pretty much contained within Spiceworks. An application, uh, in my opinion, is uh, something where there's, there's code being run from another web server that interacts via the API with Spiceworks. So you have data passing back and forth between your installation and an external website. Um, so that to me is, is kind of the main difference. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go down, we're going to click the, uh, the plus button here so we can add a new application to our installation, our new plugin in this case. And it should take us to the community. And it's going to, right now it's telling me to log in. So I'm going to refresh this page, see what happens here. Uh, standby. Okay, and we're back. So basically, I just had to log into the community here. So now that I'm logged in here, we're going to do a search for the plugin that we're looking for, Admin Broadcast. Hit Enter. 
And you'll see there are a couple things here. Um, Spiceworks did actually release a, what's called a portal broadcast app, which looks suspiciously like mine. Uh, but I think it's because of a couple things, a couple reasons. One is I had a conversation with the developers before I put out my plugin, basically saying, you know, here's what I want to do. How can I do this? Well, in the time uh, that after that, they started working on it, unbeknownst to me. And then I started working on mine, and I was able to figure out a way to pass the data back and forth between the uh, help desk application and the portal, which is pretty much comprised of using JSON da data. So once I figured that out, the rest wasn't too hard. So since this video is not about portal broadcast, we're going to go ahead and click on admin broadcast to install it. So up here, um, again, with the description of the plugins, um, you have admin broadcast, you've, we've got the star rating, how many times it's been downloaded, the version that it's at currently, if you want to see a previous version or an unlisted version, sometimes versions get put out there that haven't been listed yet by the Spiceworks staff. Um, so if you know that I put something new out that hasn't been listed yet, you can click see all and you should see the unlisted version. This tells you what versions of Spiceworks the application is it is supported with. Um, this is supported on 7.3.00050 and above, so we're good there. In uh, of course, created by by me here. Um, down below, you've got the usual stuff, the description, how it works, basically how you set it up. Um, you've got screenshots down below, and you have your ratings and reviews down below. That we're not concerned about the screenshots for now. Let's go ahead and, and install. So it's good telling us we're going to install on this server. This is my test server. Uh, the description or the uh, name, the version, and the version that it supports um, as far as the app is concerned. And we're going to click on install here. And there we have it. It is installed at the top here. There are settings available. And what we have here are, are, are um, a series of settings. The top one is the admins. Th that's a, a uh, pipe delimited list of administrators that will be um, approved to create and delete messages on the system. Down below that we have an encryption key. This is basically any arbitrary string of text that you want to put in here. So you can put in you know, just a random set of characters. Um, and it should, <laughs> I say should, because I've never really tested this before this demo. Um, and it should use this as your encryption key. And the reason being is that the JSON data is actually a URL that s anybody who has access to the Spicework server can go to and they can view um, the data in JSON format. Now, uh, knowing that, we have to encrypt that information. So basically what this key does, is it, that is the encryption key that it uses. It's... Um, forget 128 to 256 bit encrypted des encryption um, it's in the um, the documentation it tells you what it is but anyway uh, this key is what Spiceworks uses to encrypt and decrypt that information down below we have this thing called message types and we have an example over here to the right we're just gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it right in here essentially what that means is there's gonna be a drop down uh, list box with these values and notification attention and all okay they're gonna have these colors associated with them and basically what that means is when the message appears at the top of the application there's gonna be a border around it and it's gonna be colored depending on how you set it up here so I know that I might just want to make a general notification I'll put a blue border around that if there's a system down problem I'll put red and if everything's all okay typically this is in response to the uh, the attention message I'll just put a, a, a I think that's like a green color but that's just to show you can use the hexadecimal value down below that we've got this prepend message with user and timestamp that basically does what it says so when you uh, go to post your message prior to the message there's going to be a little timestamp with your name after it. Um, you, we're going to see here that that's not completely necessary. It's kind of useful uh, just in case you know people don't want to hover over the message, but I've also set it up so that if you do hover your mouse over the message, it will give you some additional information about that message. We're going to leave that unchecked for now. Um, we're going to type in our names here. And these names correspond to um, the application's users. So in our main settings here, we go to user accounts, and you'll see here that we have Rob Dunn, that's me, 
Um, so as long as you type them in exactly as you see here, you should be good to go. So I'm just going to put Rob down here. We're going to save, and we're ready to go. So now we go back to our dashboard, and we need to add content. And what we're looking for, and sometimes I get a little lost down here and all these, all these things, but uh, fortunately it starts with A, so it's <laughs> it's easier to find. And you'll see down below, I don't know if you caught that or not, but when this renders, it renders at first as a text area, a simple HTML element called text area, and then this additional interface shows up with all these little menus and everything. This is the CK Editor menu uh, for basically a lot of websites use it to help format text for their web forums, etc. And so it's an open source thing. Um, so I decided to include it in this plugin to kind of help along with the, the coding. So what we can do here, well first here's your text editor window, where you type all your information. You've got your formatting stuff, it's kind of like Word in a way. Um, down below we've got our save button, that'll save the message to the system. We can clear our message, here's our messages again, th that you see the drop downs. And here's a little checkbox if you want to make that public. Now, before I get started here with an example of how this works, I'm going to open up Google Chrome. Stand by. It's on my other screen. You can't even see it, so just stand by for a second, guys. All right, that's coming up now. <coughs> So first we're going to uh, make a quick message that uh, we're going to just, it's going to be for our help desk text only. So we're going to say something like, say, Citrix server will be rebooted this evening. Please let your users know if they call in. Okay. So um, simple text. We can just do, this would be like a, uh, a notification. We're going to save it. And you see it appears right away up here. Um, over on the other side, I'm going to log into the portal. And actually, as we as I drag it over here, you're going to see that nothing shows up here at the top, which is exactly what we want. Let's drag that off the screen. And let's say we want to add some details. Let's add a, a date and time at the bottom. We can add... Um, here at it's got the 24 hour time it's got the 12 uh, the uh, 12 hour time and then we can even do things like make that bold we can oh, we can spell check it we can do a text color oops let's highlight it first text color we can do URLs um, and then we can preview in another window which is kind of unnecessary really we can save it again and you'll see that the formatting has updated let's say that we have a system outage so we're going to say exchange um, exchange server e email is down if you want to log a ticket for this uh, you are welcome to but this is a public service announcement. We're going to make that all red. We're going to bold that and we're going to make it a public listing. We're going to give it attention. And we're going to save and it's going to prompt you now. It says this will publish a public message on the user portal. Would you like to continue? And you say yes. You hit OK. And on my other browser it has shown up already. The interesting thing is, or the cool thing is, let's see if I can do this and have both windows going at the same time so you can see what's happening here. Okay, we're going to put that up there and we're going to put this here. And you're going to see how instant, instantaneous this is. We're going to clear this message. And it's already cleared from here. On the other side, you notice it's already disappeared. It's typically a, um, I want to say it's like a 10 or 5 second refresh. I can't remember. Um, but basically what happens is in the back end, there is a uh, JSON URL that this thing is, is looking at in the background. 
and once it changes it will reflect the change here. That's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot to this plugin, but I think it's extremely useful. Um, I will say too, um, if you try to add this thing twice, it's going to tell you you got too many. You can only add it once. And if that happens, you just simply remove it here. Um, you can play with some of the other settings in here. I, the Dune document just basically performs like a clear um, pr uh, self print, self-explanatory. All these other things are pretty self-explanatory. Um, pretty useful <coughs> plugin, I think, um, because now you've got a way that you can update information here from the help desk and it actually gets out to your user portal. Prior to this, there was really no easy way of doing that. So that was kind of the idea behind this. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and um, if you want more of this kind of thing, just let me know. Find me in the community and uh, send me a private message or, you know, uh, tag me uh, when you uh, post something in, in one of the, the forums, and uh, I will try to respond. Okay, and if you have any questions, of course, just let me know. And uh, this has been Rob Dunn with another uh, Spiceworks plugin video. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.